Christopher Luxon has denied that his government's rhetoric around the Treaty of Waitangi and Māori was to blame for the defacement of the English version of Te Tiriti at Te Papa yesterday. I'm sure our panel have a few thoughts on that. Joining me this morning is New Zealand First Minister Shane Jones and Green MP Chloe Swarbrick. Morena kia korua. Um, Chloe meet yet. Shane. Shane meet Chloe. I don't think we've ever done a panel with you two before. This is, this is pretty exciting. Appreciate you both. It's very novel. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Appreciate you both being uh, with us this morning. Shane, I, I want to go back to our introduction. Does your government have anything to do with what happened at Te Papa yesterday? Oh, look, I hope Te Papa do not change the bilingual, bicultural faces of the treaty. Sadly, the jurisprudence of any jury of the 90s has been overwhelmed by a narrower approach which we saw on display yesterday by young Haimana Hirini and others trying to deface the treaty. I think it's a desecration of Te Papa, and they have to take responsibility for their own actions. Yep, so I want to go back to the question that I asked you. Do you think your government's had anything to do with that? Hi, Mana, we had on the show this morning saying that Te Tiriti is being used as a political football, and obviously we're talking about things like the introduction of a bill to redefine the principles of Te Tiriti. So to that original question, Shane Jones. No, look, I think people need to step back. There's a whole bunch of other New Zealanders other than my own tribe, Te Opodi, and other stakeholders that have been on the treaty journey since 1975. And whether we like it or not, they're looking for a voice. The Māori King's holding his hui. There'll be a whole bunch of meetings and engagements as the bill makes its way to the select committee. But as the Prime Minister said, that's as far as uh, the certainty uh, is represented, just to the select committee. I just think people are overreacting. Chloe, can I bring you in here then? Um, because should there be a conversation around this, how Te Papa displays Te Tiriti or Waitangi? Because the argument is that the two versions are up, right? But that the majority of those who visit the museum don't understand the Māori version, and so therefore, therefore accept that the English version as truth. So should there be a conversation around this? Absolutely, there should be a conversation. More so than that, there should be a constitutional conversation within Aotearoa New Zealand. I don't think the way that we get there is through the incredibly reductive binary as has been proposed from the likes of the ACT Party as part of this incoming government with the likes of that Treaty Principles legislation. I think it's really important to know as well uh, my understanding of the backstory of what occurred most recently leading to this protest uh, was that there has been a Māori advisory group kind of proposing that there needed to be a different way of framing mm. up what we're calling now the English version of the text, but as we all know, is not the English translation because there is very different content in both of those texts. So first and foremost, in the uh, Te Reo Māori version, it is that Māori never ceded sovereignty. Obviously, there um, was a panel that was damaged um, in what happened at Te Papa. So where is the line when it comes to protests? And I'll throw this question to both of you, but I'll start with you, Chloe. Uh, look, i got to say, as we look back at the arc of history, I think that we have a tendency to sanitise protest and to sanitise movements for justice and to sanitise what ends up becoming uh, the mainstream understanding of what has occurred. So to that effect, I think that the core uh, substance and purpose of what those protesters were undertaking is obviously something that they truly believed in and is something which they themselves have expressed they tried to get outcomes on through trying to engage with Papa in a number of different ways. Uh, but if I can also, just within the broader context of Te Reo Māori and the utilisation of it for our state institutions. I'd like to ask Matua Shane what we think that Te Papa should be called now that we're stripping off the Te Reo names of all of our institutions. Well, on the first, on, on the matter of the, uh, excuse me, on the matter of the protesters, look, it's really a publicity seeking stunt from some mockingbirds and it'll pass. But, but does, isn't that uh, what happens no when they feel like they haven't been listened to? I have no doubt in my mind like that, that the board to? and Te Papa will keep its name. Sorry? Oh, I'm just, you, you know, you talk about this being an exercise of just showmanship, etc. But isn't that what happens when people don't feel like they're listening, listened to? Well, look, they're, they're entitled to protest and each generation should protest. But really going to Te Papa with a grinder and imagining you're going to win friends and influence, it's hard enough to get people to show genuine interest in the treaty as it is without erasing a major part of the treaty. Any jury in the Waitangi Tribunal have said that the treaty stands for a bicultural approach. It's always been the jurisprudence. I accept there's a new generation who believe that uh, the treaty is, is primarily seen as a charter of indigenous rights. They're entitled to that view. That's not the view of my party. Um, and sorry, I was talking out of the top of you, so I missed the last um, uh, part to your answer around Te Papa, keeping its name. 
Uh, yes, as I said, I've no doubt in my mind that Te Papa will remain that name. And look, uh, there's a lot of froth around um, some of the names being changing. Uh, changing. Not all the names are going to change, but I mean, Oranga Tamariki, that is grossly misnamed. And uh, the State Services Commission, I've no idea what it's even known in English as now, has got the Maori name of Te Kawa Mataho. Well, that, 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 that is so irrelevant to the functioning of a secular set of government departments, and they should focus on their output and whether or not the money going in is generating value going out. How much yeah, money is I... it costing to change the names back? The OLH, each, de each department will have to tease that through. What's the cost of um, erasing or changing the emphasis on some of these names? But I can tell you the name of the State Services Commission to Kawa Mataho should not remain one inch more during the course of next year. Um, a relevant question, uh, Chloe, thank you. But also, I, I do note that there are a number of Māori leaders too that agree with you in terms of Oranga Tamariki and uh, that name being translated into Te Reo Māori when it doesn't actually live up to the principles of that. Can we just go quickly, because I know we've only got like two minutes left. Ghost tax, should we have one here? Uh, ghost house tax, should we have one here in Aotearoa? Well, we're one of the only countries in the OECD that do not have any form of wealth tax, stamp duty tax, uh, inheritance tax, capital gains tax, or otherwise anything that kind of is designed towards addressing those issues with regard to inequity. And that is particularly profound when it comes to the impacts on our housing market. So, yeah, we should totally be investigating it if the government's deciding to take all other options off the table. Shane? The reality is in 2021, this was already investigated and they found that uh, the ghost houses was a kehua story. It was a ghost itself. <laughs> hey, we're gonna we don't have time to get into the details on that one, but that's not quite true. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we, we do have to wrap things up, but just to finish off, um, just curious as to know what you're both going to be doing for Christmas. I'll start with you, Chloe. Uh, I'm going to be spending some time with Fano. I'm um, getting some rest up, but also just reflecting quite a bit on the government that's coming in here. I mean, for everybody who is going on to their Christmas break, it's not quite the three stooges as much as it is the three scrooges. They're coming for you if you're a renter, if you're a worker, if you're somebody who cares about the future of our planet. So we'll be restoring and making sure that our green team is ready to go in the new year. Have a I can see you just having a little bit of a giggle to yourself up to this Christmas. Look, yes, we're uh, loving it, we're uh, loving uh, Jenny, it. <laughs> uh, Jenny, uh, I'm originally from Kai Tai, half Dalmatian Māori, with copious quantities of red wine and a big fat hangi, and a big moi. <laughs> <laughs> well, mere kiri hemeti kia kōrua. Merry Christmas to you both. I uh, appreciate your time this morning, and uh, for our panels also, uh, Chloe Swarbrick and Shane Jones joining us. Tēnā kōrua. Ngā mihi.